I think uh, nations prosper when they have economic institutions that create incentives for investment and innovation and they create a level playing field so that uh, the talents of uh, its population broadly can be deployed. But these sorts of institutions, which we call inclusive institutions, are the exception uh, throughout history. Instead, most societies are under extractive economic institutions, where the name extractive really suggests the meaning. They have been designed by a small group, the elite, to extract resources from the rest of society. And those extractive institutions suck the energy out of the system. They don't create incentives. They don't create a level playing field. And they don't generally lead to sustained economic growth. The United States, to be sure, is still an inclusive society. Not only do we have institutions that are generally open, but also they have created great innovation over the last century, but also over the last several decades. But there are worrying signs about the United States. They start with the economic picture. If you look at US wages, they have been largely stagnant. The median income doesn't earn much more than it did 40 years ago. And at the same time, the top 1% on which the Occupy Wall Street movement has put the flashlight has become very rich, for example, uh, taking home almost a quarter of in the entire national income of the United States. But more worrying than the economic inequality is the implications of that economic inequality for political inequality. Because when economic inequality leads to political inequality, then the economic institutions start sliding even worse because the people who monopolize political power will start to change the rules to their favor and at the expense of the society at large. This is not the first time where economic inequality has shot up and economic inequality has been associated with incipient political inequality. We had exactly the same picture during the Gilded Age and its aftermath. And if anything, the robber barons of that day were more unscrupulous and more ruthless than our, uh, our political elites and uh, the very wealthy today. But despite that, the United States managed to withstand that challenge, and it did so on the basis of the strength of its institutions by mobilizing the average American, first in the populist movement, then in the progressive movement, and then together with those two movements and the uh, entire American public having an impact on US politics with presidents such as Teddy Roosevelt, William Taft, and Woodrow Wilson, who subscribed to the views of the progressive movement and started passing legislation and, uh, 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 and changes in institutions that strengthened the inclusivity of the United States and uh, stopped the tide. Thank you.